welcome back. Stasa 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. Uh, the knife I have for you today is the Steel Wheel Mini Tasso. Uh, before I get started, you like my videos, you like knife content, and you're not already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. And uh, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up so I know whether I did a good job or not. <laughs> and I love talking with y'all down in the comment section. But let's get started. So uh, this knife right here comes in at $159 at Blade HQ. It comes in uh, the standard box, kind of has like a, I don't know, like a metal looking finish on it. Uh, Steel Wheel Urban, the logo on this side. Then there's your information right there. And it, it comes in a, a, another box, this is just a sleeve. All right, enough about that. <laughs> let's take a close, well, let's, let's get some quick specs out of the way. Uh, you have a total length of 7.25, so just right in that size range that I like. You have a blade length of three inches, so it'll be legal on, in a ton of areas. Uh, you have a grip area of three and a quarter inches. Um, you have a handle thickness a little above average at 0.58 inches. It's a little bit over half an inch. Um, you have width in the pocket, that's how much space it'll take up in the pocket, is right at 1.32 inches, <laughs> and you have a blade stock thickness of 0.125 inches, and the, the um, measurement behind the edge is about an average of uh, 20 thousandths, um, in this area right here and at the tip, it, it broadens out to around 30 thousandths and that is at 22 degrees per side. Uh, it is wearing my edge and I'll, I'll try to uh, talk about that a little bit toward the end if y'all wanna know why it's already sharpened. I didn't get this knife brand new. It was like new, I got it uh, from another YouTuber that was selling one. So I figured I'd help his channel out by buying a knife from him instead of going buy it from a retailer. Um, so let's get a close look at this beautiful, beautiful blade. You have this nice clip point blade shape. Everybody that's been following me knows I love that. Satin finish. Um, you have a uh, the steel wheel logo on this side. And then on this side, the name of the knife, um, the designer and the steel and the model number. Um, you have dual thumb studs, as you can see, like those cone shaped studs on both sides. You have a little small row of jimping right there. They also did a great job of crowning the spine. I absolutely love, love, love that. <clears throat> um, you have uh, a sharpening tool right here and you do have a, somewhat of a forward finger choil. If you have smaller fingers, like skinnier fingers, you can you could you could choke up. It's not probably intended for that, but I can get my finger up there and I put my finger right there just to get get choked up a little bit better. Um, let's see. Let's close this guy up. You have solid G10 frames, no internal liners to help reduce weight. And while we're talking about weight, let's get a quick weight on this guy. 3.13 ounces, so that's perfect in my book. You have standard hardware, but one thing I do like is they're all Torx T8. I don't have to switch out drivers whenever I'm main, uh, doing maintenance on the knife. <clears throat> um, you also have, why did I open this? You also have contoured scales. As you can see, they, they, they're they rounded better on this side. You can see that. Um, it does have a kind of like a, uh, a radius uh, blue backspacer. And one thing I like, they didn't break up the lines by putting a lanyard hole right there, mainly because they couldn't because of the pocket clip, but that's fine with me. They put a lanyard post right there for all you lanyard guys, and it's hidden out of the way in between the two, uh, in between the backspacer right there. <clears throat> the, this is oddly uh, tip up right hand carry only, which that really has me scratching my head, especially when this knife is totally ambidextrous. Well, we're gonna jump into this lock right now. This is their 
uh, patented ant lock and um, the, the lock was designed by a custom knife maker uh, that I think um, did the prototypes for this knife and it took them a good while because they, they couldn't find a company who could get this right and <laughs> I took this guy apart to clean it up being that I wasn't the original owner and basically this lock as you can see down there it's basically just a modified back lock and I can't exp I can't say whether it's stronger than your normal back lock or if it's stronger than an axis lock I'm sure they'll claim that it is but I will say this okay it this is basically this little tab right here has a little bar that that hooks on to a piece underneath that lock let me show you when you open this it flexes up and then it falls down into the um the little it's got a little groove right behind just like a back lock and the little piece falls into that groove like this and there's spring tension on the back side of it that's keeping it pushed like up so it can't it can't get itself out of there okay but after uh, playing around with this knife for, I don't know, an hour or two, I was, I was watching TV, open and closing, like most, uh, most of us knife addicts do while we're trying to waste time or we're bored. And I closed it like this, I opened it, and I put my finger, I put my finger like this, and I didn't have my finger anywhere near that lock and it, it would, whoop, closed on me. And I, I was like, okay. So I let it close all the way. I opened it back up and the lock was not engaging. <clears throat> um, I tried it several more times and the lock would not, it would slide up, but it wasn't, it wasn't coming seat. It wasn't getting seated in the, uh, in that little cup section like this on the back side of the blade. Let me show you on, see how it's got that little cup right there. Well, the little, the little, the little uh, piece that falls inside there like that was, it was either, there was either something inside of there to where it wasn't allowing that piece to sit or this was just not traveling up high. I mean, traveling all the way down. And that's something else I noticed the that little ledge right there is very shallow. I, I didn't really inspect another back lock. Maybe that's, that's normal, but it, as you can see, as you can hear, there's not a whole lot of, you know, clanking sound that it's falling into a big groove or something. So that, I should have waited to talk about that toward the end in my dislikes, but I, I didn't want to forget about that. So let's keep going. Uh, make sure I talked about all the things that I like about this knife. Um, I will say it does take a little time to get used to this because let me see if I have an axis lock nearby. On an axis lock, we're so used to pulling straight back like this, pulling it towards you, pulling it back this way, and that's how you get the, the lock to disengage. On this one, instead of pulling this way like an axis lock, the first thing I want to do is push it down, down to disengage, but you push this little tab up and it can be done one handed and you can either push it down with, with one hand, one hand like this, but mine, now that it's broken in and I polished the washer and stuff, it is absolutely a free dropper. Uh, at first when it's breaking in, I couldn't spidey flick it up. Oh, see, it's still kind of hard because it is somewhat of a back lock, but I can get it out. I can definitely uh, shoot it out like that with my, my thumb. <laughs> and I see this knife breaking in more and more as the time goes by and as I get more use on this guy. Um, let's see. It does have a D-shaped pivot in there. And I, I found it rather interesting. You know, I like seeing companies go that extra mile. Um, but instead of having the D-shaped D -shaped pivot just being held in by, you know, that little slot being held by just um, G10, which this thick of G10, it would have been just fine, I'm sure. Maybe over time it could have uh, deformed. They put a little metal tab right on side of it to reinforce that area inside the G10. They inlaid it inside 
inside the inside of the G10. I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Uh, maybe whenever I do a follow-up video, I'll, I'll show a picture of that. And I have the, a picture of the inside workings of the knife as well. Um, <coughs> let's see. What else? Um, do, 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 do. Nice broken in. Okay. Um, I, I, I got a good bit of use on this guy since I have it. I haven't had it super long, maybe a week or so. And I was breaking down boxes at my wife's work, helping her uh, clean up. And I was, I was opening in some mini blind packages <laughs> and it was, it was wrapped up like real thick, uh, at, in the, in this package, there was a real big, thick plastic wrap, like wrapped around it with the little thing. So I was just like, let me just cut through the plastic wrap. Um, and I'll be on my way so I can get this done quickly. Like I said, I'd already broke, broken down a bunch of boxes. The edge held up pretty well. This is Bowler M390. I don't know if I said that before. My bad. Um, and I don't think Kevin, uh, I don't think the guy I got it from, I don't think he sharpened it uh, before he sent it to me. So it wasn't a fresh edge. Well, whenever I went through to cut that, that plastic, I noticed it wasn't cutting all the way. And I mean, I went, I gave it a good pressure thing and my dumb self didn't realize that it had a metal bead chain inside of there. And I literally ripped the entire edge off the knife. So not a big deal, easily fixed. Um, I wanted to put a nice fresh edge on it anyway, since I didn't know where it came from, from Kevin. Um, and uh, in, in that use, I'm gonna start talking about a few things that I, I don't like. Uh, first off, the ergos are pretty good. Um, it is a little cramped from my medium sized hands, mainly because you have this hook right there. I could let myself go back a little bit further and kind of have that pinky half off. This thing doesn't bother me at all. Uh, and this grip is fairly comfortable. Um, there, the only thing that I, that, that started giving me issues whenever I started putting a lot of pressure is you can see right there, this ramp on this pocket clip is, is pretty darn high. And I felt that pretty bad. Um, it wasn't the most comfortable, but just whenever I was cutting cardboard and stuff like that, I was able to position my hand to where it didn't really bother me. But whenever I, I, I was putting a lot of pressure trying to cut through that uh, plastic wrap, I, I definitely felt the back side of this clip right here. <clears throat> um, a few other nitpicks and complaints. Uh, I'm not a big fan of all their billboarding. It's not that bad because it's kind of um, in certain lights you don't really see it. It's it's only whenever you like shine it in certain areas. Still, well, that's okay, but all this stuff is just unnecessary. That it's already on the box. You don't need it. You don't need the name of the knife. I'm not. I don't. I'm not going to forget the name. And if, even if I do, I'll check the box. Definitely don't need all this stuff. You could have put the designer's logo, you know, on, on the knife. That would have been fine. And then the blade still over here. I, I don't. I don't like when they put it right here. You know, put the blade still right here. Just be discreet. Um, it just. I don't know. It's just not my favorite thing, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. Um, also, this knife came to me from uh, the guy I bought it from, Off Centered. And as you can see, it's favoring the right. It's not terrible, it's not rubbing or anything. I, I tried to fix it. I, I swapped the, the washers from one side to another in all different manners. I tried a lot, I know a lot of tricks to fix centering and it's just not gonna be centered. There's something that's off somewhere. So if that's a deal breaker for you, that's something I want to be aware of. I don't know if they're all like that. I know I heard uh, several other people talk about this and it's not something that really bothered me that much because I didn't really, uh, I didn't notice it that often, but when it's open, these little, these little tabs right there they can rattle depending on, um, I, I guess, how they sit. And actually, they're not rattling that bad anymore. But they were rattling a, a good bit before I cleaned it out. But one thing I did do is I put some lube behind there so it, it's not like, so it easily can move back and forth. <laughs> um, the button does take time to break in. At first, it was very uncomfortable. 
And after I worked worked with it and then tore it down, cleaned it up, it, it got very easy to, to disengage. You can do it with one finger, like I said, and uh, you can do it with the back side. That's why this knife's totally ambidextrous. You can, you can access a lot from both sides, but why wouldn't they tap the clip? You know, I, I'm, I mean, it doesn't bother me because I'm a right-handed person, but why would you just shoot yourself in the foot when you have a total ambidextrous knife, double dual thumb studs, uh, lock that can be accessed on both sides, but you don't have a clip on that side. That's just, that's just kind of stupid to me. Um, <clears throat> that lockup issue, that that's concerning. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. I will keep y'all posted. It might have just been a one-time thing, but if it does happen more more often, I'm definitely gonna let y'all know that because you know you buy a locking knife for it to lock. That's that's a, you know a job it's it's got to be doing right. <clears throat> um, let's see. La, 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 la. So that's pretty much it. We talked about the uh, the billboarding, the blade being off-centered, uh, the lock not locking up for me um, a few times, and uh, the rattle in the um, in the disengage dis lock disengagement bars, and the ramp on the clip. Um, let's get some quick size comparisons, and then I will let y'all go. Here it is with the Power 3. Pretty much the exact same size. You have about the same exact uh, grip area with these two, about the same size blade. You probably have, you have a little bit more cutting edge on the uh, Tass Mini Tasso. Here it is with the, whoop. Here it is with the Steel Wheel, I mean, <laughs> uh, Ace Biblio. So the Biblio's a little bit smaller. You have about the same size grip area though. And two more, you got the Benchmade Bug Out, which is a good, it's a little bit bigger, probably about a quarter of an inch longer. And also, sorry about that people. Also the Civivi McKenna. So there you go, the McKenna's a little bit smaller, the Bug Out's a little bit bigger. Overall, at the $150, $159, I think that's a great bang for your buck. You're getting contoured scales. You're getting an, a new lock. You're uh, getting M390 steel. Um, there's a lot to love on here. It's just gonna, it's really gonna, before I can really recommend this, I gotta make sure that lock's gonna stay uh, secure. And I want to do a little bit more cutting so I can get a better feel for the steel and how, how well it was heat treated and rock weld and all that good stuff. Um, it's not it's not the, the worst slice. It's a pretty good slicer, you know, at 20,000, that's like a PM2, so not bad. Um, I, of course, I would like to see it a little bit thinner, but that's okay. But at 159, I think the large is 169. Uh, if the this handle size is too small for you, the large is not like you know ginormous, very comfortable. You know, I'll probably do something with that clip. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. If you like this video, like I said, hit the thumbs up button, and I will see y'all next one. Peace.